now. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our first webinar for parents, specially designed for or prepared for, for new families at the Met. We're very happy to have you all here. And um, we're going to start with our presentation, and then at the end, we're going to have the, the, a chance to, to have a group discussion, okay? Well, today, uh, we, we, uh, you will learn about the, our school community and how to build relationships and a sense of belonging in the virtual learning environment. Can you see my screen now? No? No. Okay. Give me one second. Sorry. Can you see it now? It's loading. Ms. Roxana, can you see the screen now? Yes, we can see it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Okay, so, well, we want to start with this quote from Mark Twain. It says that 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So, throw off the bow line, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds and end your sails, explore, dream, discover. Okay, so whatever the decision made whether it be moving to a new country or making a change of school the the new the novel always presents uncertainties and questions right so one of these questions might be what are we doing you might be asking to yourself uh, moving abroad uh is one of the of, of the hardest things you will ever have to do if you're an expat uh, all the new stuff you will have to face in a new country where you probably uh, don't know anyone could be a very overwhelming experience. Uh, but living abroad can be very, also a very fulfilling experience too. So even though it could push you to your very limits, uh, by the end of it, you will be a better rounded person. Uh, also, a new school might, might seem intimidating but it doesn't have to be at all like this. It is a unique experience that you and your family are beginning to lead. And despite all the initial challenges, it will provide, provide you the opportunity to bond tighter and grow as individuals. So, what to expect when you're transitioning into a new school? The first step in developing a uh, emotional regulation is to know the emotion themselves. Once we start identifying and labeling our emotions, we, we can create a clear distinction between uh, different feelings. So it's okay to feel discomfort or stress or anxiety or feel overwhelmed by all these new information, you know, schedules, instructions, new people, etc. Okay? Validate the full range of emotions and legitimize your emotions in general. Okay, all emotions are valid and allowed. So, what to do, right? Um, difficult emotions contribute uh, to family stress and drive conflict, especially when happening alongside loss and grief of the of the things we of the things that are familiar or known to us and especially children. So one of the things we can do when we have to, to cope with this situation is to allow your child and yourself to, express, to experience the stress, okay? Addressing these feelings can help children adapt and manage, helping tremendously in setting the tone for the rest of the school year and even the pandemic. This is an excellent opportunity for you to sit and talk with your child about what is bothering them, what are their fears, and what can be done to help them feel better. Remember to keep open communication with your child. 
children in, in a new educational setting are already overwhelmed with new schedules and teachers. So they, they don't need that extra pressure to perform at home. Try to reduce your children's load when it comes to an unnecessary, especially during the, the first weeks of school, okay, during this transition. Slowly start to introduce your children to outside activities, helping them to adjust to their normal level of activity. Other things uh, you can do is to talk to your teacher about your concerns. Almost no one will understand how much stress you and your child are going through more than your child's teacher. Discuss your concerns with them and ask for feedback. You will discover that your teacher has resources to help you and your child. And after all, they, they've, been, they, they've likely help out numerous other children in the same situation. Okay? Um, talk to fellow parents by joining either the, the class WhatsApp chat group. Uh, you, can, you can talk to, to other parents who might be in, in, in the same situation. You can contact the class representative if you, if you would like to be in touch with other parents that had faced similar situations before. Having people who understand exactly what you're going through can provide a lot of support and can even help your child can even help your child and other children who are new to, to the school. Um, let your child have playtime with you. This is, this is very important for you to set aside time to show your child that they are not alone, that you are there for them. Either you can go to the playground or just stay at home and play in the backyard if, if you have one or together in the living room. Regardless what you decide to do, your child will appreciate that the fact that you want to spend time with them and will let loose a little bit in the process. Keep the old routine. Try to keep the old routine. Did your child have a special morning routine while attending their old school? Well, if so, try to keep that same routine with their new, with, with their new school. Structure and familiarity comfort children and help them adjust to changes. Read books together, okay? Read books about transitioning to a new school with your child can be very helpful. A book can offer helpful suggestions for both you and, and, and your children. It might also encourage your child to ask questions and talk about their feelings. I will, uh, uh, when we finish the, the presentation, I will share with you a link through the chat that Ms. Corbett, Ms. Maria Eugenia Corbett, our librarian, uh, shared with me with some suggestions from our EPIC platform. You can access these books throughout the day until five or, until four or five o'clock. Uh, you, you have access to, to them and I will copy the link in the chat for you. So you can pick up uh, yeah, an appropriate book for your children's age. Transferring to a new school is a, it might be a stressful situation and your child might be struggling to get the sleep they need. Children's age uh, from 6 through 13, uh, they need from 8 to 11 hours of sleep every night. Okay, so adequate sleep will help your child cope with anxiety in, an, in a healthy way and process new experiences. And be patient. Remember to be patient. It will take a little time for your child to get used to a new school. Be patient and let, and let your child know that you are there for them and reassure them that, that they're going to have a great school year. And before they know, they, they will no longer feel like the new kid. So let's talk about uh, now about the virtual school experience that you might be already that you uh, already started experiencing. Uh, this return to school for this 2020-2021 school year represents for many children to come back uh, either to the dinner table or to the desk in their bedroom. 
what started as a contingency situation to try to control the, the coronavirus pandemic has gradually been established as a new normal. As parents, this return to virtual classes raises a series of questions and concerns that might be specific to, you, to your personal situation. Each case is unique, either because it is the first time your child goes to school or because it's their last school year or, or because you are a new family at the Met. Whatever the situation is, everyone should be aware of their concerns and the anxiety that children might be experiencing. Each child must grieve what represented the old normal, whether it, it was buying, you know, the school bag or the shoes for school, getting ready to meet up with classmates, hugging the new teacher or making new friends. All these circumstances uh, will demand a further social emotional adjustment. We have to remember that several of these things will continue to happen in the virtual scenario, you know, getting the, the new peer uh, group, developing that sense of belonging, bonding with the homebrew teacher, all those experiences that will keep happening, but they might take a little, a little longer, okay? That is why we are sharing today some recommendations that can help uh, these uh, return to virtual classes more bearable and favorable. So, as we said before, the, the first step in developing uh, emotional regulation is to know the emotions themselves, okay? Addressing these feelings first can help children adapt better. To do so, follow the three R's, reflect, recognize, and reset. Reflect is when to listen to your child with compassion and reflect what you hear as an exercise in validation and empathy. Recognize problems and brainstorm solutions. Zoom out to better detect patterns of worry or anger and challenge your child to create solutions to improve the situation. And reset means to redirect your child's attention to something calming when they are feeling stressed or upset. Another uh, suggestion is to be open and honest about uncertainty. Change is hard for children and teens in general. Not knowing when life will return to normal might provoke stress and anxiety. So difficulty with transitions can, can manifest in several ways, in, including resistance, avoidance, distraction, constant negotiations, or even full-blown meltdowns. If your child demonstrates these behaviors, try some of these proven strategies to help them better navigate the change and the uncertainty of today and tomorrow, and deal with stress in a healthy way. If you want to go further on each of them, you can go to the counselor's website where we have a document called a back to virtual school support plan for, for all families. I will, I will share the link later in the chat where you can uh, have some examples and specific recommendations to go through these, uh, a, through these strategies. Remind your child that change is no one's fault. Teach perspective talking. Perspective taken to create boundaries and coping strategies and ask for acceptance. Another strategy is to uh, discuss school year expectations by creating a long term plan. Sit down with your child and answer the following questions as a family What is the big picture for this school year? What would you most like to happen this year? If you could make three wishes about this academic year, what would you ask for? These are great questions to start a discussion about what would they like to achieve this year. If your children are older, about nine and up, uh, it, it might, might, might sound that the goal needs like a follow-up. At the counselor's website, and this document I, I referred before, you can find some uh, details, uh, how to, 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 to establish detailed goals for your children and also review 
all this information we are sharing today. Develop a routine to be back on track. This is very important because routines help uh, to keep uh, consistency and minimize reminding and nagging and improve cooperation. With your family, design a routine that values steadiness over rigidity and predictability, predictability over restrictiveness. The routine should establish regular wake-ups, bed, mealtimes, and shock of time throughout the days for activities including screen time and socializing. Remember that the foundation of any solid routine is collaboration. When drafting your routine, ask your children what matters the most to them, and this will ensure their acceptance and participation in the plan. Remember to give teenagers some flexibility for socializing times. Clear rules about screen time. Okay, this is uh, one of the, of the, of the biggest concerns among parents this time. Finding the right screen time balance can be complicated for all families, especially now when, when increased use of screens is normal and, and somewhat unav unavoidable. But try to, to avoid fights and negotiate the amount of, of screen time with your child and help them understand how much additional time they can earn and how to do it. Safe socializing. Uh, this, today, kids are bored, frustrated, and feeling lonely. This quarantine has provoked these feelings in them, and, and they need their friends. And it's on parents to help them strike a balance between safe in person and online hangouts. Ms. Roxana later will share with us further details on how to make this possible. Okay, um, establish clear rules about online learning. Uh, in virtual school setting, parents have an important role as facilitators of the appropriate circumstances for a successful learning. It is a team effort between teachers and parents. So please be aware of, of your child's classroom agreements. Basically, they are, are the same for everyone, but uh, try to be aware of the of your child's particular classroom agreements and stay vigilant that your child is following them appropriately. Now, sorry, I'm going a little bit, you know, in a hurry because we have these technical problems at the beginning and we're running out of time. But we will, I would like to go, uh, and maybe we can go further in, in future webinars about these topics if, if you want to know more about this. Um, how to develop family sense of belonging, okay? Uh, the need to experience belonging is a basic psychological need. For students, a sense of belonging and community can impact their learning. When students feel they belong to a class community, they are more likely to, to be motivated to learn, to complete their classwork, to feel safe, to contribute to discussions, and to be open to feedback. Many factors can influence students' sense of belonging and community. One of them might be family perceptions about the new school. That's why today I wanted to take a few seconds to reflect on why did you choose the Met? Okay? Think about it and uh, have you shared these reasons with your children? Uh, I want to share with you this personal experience. I remember from my, from my childhood that many times I heard uh, the implicit and, and explicit reasons behind why my parents choose uh, our school. Somehow, I, I could feel their pride and the sacrifice they were making in paying for a private education for me and my sister. And these, these reasons grew with me and made me feel responsible and proud that my parents' investment was being rewarded uh, for my schoolwork or for my school effort. Not always I was the best student, but in my times of weakness, I remembered my parents' reasons and how much they valued the school they had chosen for us. And that helped me get back on track. So with this personal uh, story, I would like to make you aware that we are always communicating. We're always sending implicit and explicit messages. And these messages can be very powerful. 
share with your children why you choose the Met. And this will help you and them to develop that sense of belonging to our school community. There are other ways, of course, to develop that sense of belonging as parents, as and one of them is to keep in touch with other members of the community. And this can be done through the parent council, cl class representatives, participating in the, in the ES admin coffee mornings, classroom WhatsApp chat, uh, be here with us throughout these counselors' webinars, the, uh, 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 be informed through the Med Weekly. And of course, we are also here for you. We post regular Regularly, we post information that you might find useful for healthy parenting at our counselor's website. And also, you know, as I mentioned before, we have these weekly web webinars where you can come and share with us your concerns regarding parenting. Thank you very much. Now we have Ms. Roxana with some other topics. Ms. Roxana, are you going to share the screen? We can see your screen, we cannot listen to you. Unmute yourself. Okay. There you go. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Roxana Palacios. I'm the elementary school counselor from early childhood to second grade. And we, I want to share with you, continuing with Matt, what Ms. Batista was mentioning, something really important in our school is the classroom community. And the counselors are part of this community. So we are, Ms. Roxana, myself, I work from early childhood to second grade, as I just mentioned, and Ms. Batista works from third to fifth grade. The services that we provide in the school are individual counseling sessions for students who are growing through any situation concerning their social and emotional well-being. Also small group counseling sessions, mostly for students that are struggling to solve problems between themselves. Family support, teacher support with social emotional learning practices and we participate actively in class meetings and morning meetings with the students. We also offer these parents webinars every week. So how can you reach out to us? First, filling out the form in the counselor's website, as Ms. Batista mentioned, there's an option, very easy to find, and then you fill, fill it out and we get back to you as soon as possible. You may also contact us via email. Our emails are rpalacios at themetropolitanschool.com and ybatista at themetropolitanschool.com. You may also do it through your child's homeroom teacher. And the main thing is that we are here to support you. One initiative that we started to implement in the MED like one year ago is the responsive classroom approach. So at the beginning of last academic school year, all of our teachers and elementary school staff were trained in this approach, and we have continued to use it in our virtual learning experience. So their motto now is maintaining a positive community remotely. And it's basically a student-centered social and emotional approach to teach uh, that is related to teaching and discipline, and it consists in a set of research and evidence-based practices designed to create joyful and engaging classrooms and build a sense of belonging in school communities. So through these practices, students feel that they belong to their classroom community and the school community overall. So today I'm just gonna share, it has a lot of practices and intervention strategies, but today I'm gonna share three very general that are included in your child's schedule. The first one is morning meeting. So every day at 8 a.m., your child is gonna have a morning meeting with their homeroom teacher and classmates. And this morning meeting has a structure that we're gonna share with you more in depth in some other webinars, but it helps to, again, build that sense of community within the group. 
Then there's quiet time, which is like a, an amount of time reserved to practice quiet activities such as reading, writing, drawing, or just relaxing. And it's usually because it helps uh, smooth transitions. For example, after lunch, then we have a 10 minute quiet time and students can get ready for the next activities in the afternoon. And then we have close and circle. It's like a shorter meeting at the end of every day to reflect and share about their learning and experiences that they enjoyed that day. Wow, this is very challenging for new students and even more for virtual learning, you might think, making friends. How is our child going to make friends in this situation? First of all, we have their virtual buddy and our buddy system consists on selecting some students as virtual buddies to new students that are starting in the math. And this will help them feel welcome since the very beginning of the school year. Students are selected according to personal traits, such as empathy, social skills, and also they need to be willing to do it. So we ask them first and they are very happy to support their new classmates. So how does it work? <clears throat> First, you will receive an email. You, you should have received an email introducing the new student, your child with their buddy. Then there are some closing circles organized with their buddy, friends and teacher. And they may also have play dates with either Ms. Batista or myself to play or just talk about something interesting for them. social interactions in times of COVID. I'm gonna share with you some ideas of things that you can do to promote these social interactions with your child's classmates. Because now we're having, we've been asked to keep physical distancing and recent schools closures are happening all around the world, but our kids still need to have access to friends. They still need to engage with friends and have those interactions. So online interactions are required. And I'm, I'll give you some ideas that are not online, but that you could also practice these days. So the first and easiest one is set up a virtual play date. Uh, you can use Zoom, Google Hangouts, FaceTime, WhatsApp, Caribou, Marco Polo, you name it. The idea is that they can play a simple game or just hang out. It depends on their age. For younger kids, they can play tic-tac-toe, hangman, connect four, for cheese, and maybe for older students, they just have a conversation about their day or some things that they like, some shared interests. You may have game nights. For example, there are some apps like Pogo that allow your kids to play some of their favorite board games with friends without sitting around the same table. You may also play video games. And of course, this needs to be supervised and you need to set schedules for them. The good thing with game nights is that usually they have a shot and they also interact through the shot. You may have a movie night and then they can watch it together. Netflix, Party and other websites allow kids and people to watch movies together. After you complete the movie, you may have a short Zoom meeting to share your favorite parts of the movie. Or you may go retro and mail letters and notes. So you may help your kids make drawings or write letters to friends. This is another way to stay connected. You may deliver if that's possible, or you may take a picture and send it to your child's friends, parents, and or teacher so that they can share it with them. Two more ideas. Look for or create scavenger hunts. So there's a wonderful app called Goose Chase, and then you can create scavenger hunt with your child that they can play in line with their friends. Please consider that every task needs to be challenging, fun, but with things that are easy to do at home. And last but not least, and only, only, only if it's safe for your child, and the place follows all of your security measures, it will be very helpful for them to go to a playground. See other children is great for them, even if they have to, they have to keep the physical distance, they need that relationship. So of course, you need to make sure that it's safe, that it follows all the measures first. And 
another important point of helping your child um, make friends and keep those friendships is to share with them. So it's like today I, how was your day? You can find a moment in your daily routine to talk to your children or your child. For example, when going for a walk, during dinner or any meal, during breakfast, during lunch, or before going to sleep. Have a conversation and not an interrogation. And this is very important because usually parents are like, how was your day? Or what are you expecting to do today? Or what did you like? Who did you play with? And it turns into an interrogation and it doesn't feel natural at all. It doesn't feel like a conversation. And in this conversation, it's important to ask open-ended questions. Instead of asking questions that might be answered just with yes or no, you might ask like, what was your favorite part of the day? Or what did you play with your friends? Any open-ended question could work. You may also tell him or her about your day in age-appropriate language Share how was your day, what were the things that you learned that you enjoyed, what were the things that were struggling for you that day. And do not judge him or her, only show empathy. So we want to end up with a message for you and I'm gonna read it for you. With parenting, there are no real answers. Instinctually, you do the right thing. It happens the way it's supposed to. So do the best you can. Everybody goes through difficulties with parenting. We all go through the joys of it and we go through the difficulties of it. So it's the greatest journey. And now we have questions and answers. Thank you very much for joining us. Please feel free to text your questions on the chat and we will be reading them and answering them for you. Okay, I see some questions here. No, there's not any question yet. Yeah, so this is only like an introduction to some tips and information that might be useful for you as new parent in the Met. We're gonna have some, we're gonna have weekly webinars and our webinar series last year during the third trimester was called Parenting in Quarantine but we changed it a little bit and now it's gonna be called Parenting Tips. So we're gonna share tips every week that will help uh, improve your child's experience in virtual school. And well, this, this is special only for new families, but starting next week, you can join other families in our webinars. So please feel free to write any comments, any questions that you have. We are here to answer. You send an inform of the student weekly by mail and inform, okay. What, um, hello, Tamina, what do you mean with an inform of the student? Uh, I, can I answer that question, Ms. Roxana? Okay. Yeah. Good afternoon, my name is Nidia Manzanares and I'm the elementary school assistant principal. Um, I am assuming that you mean that if you're asking if we send information about how the student has performed or engaged weekly, um, and we will be sending parents a um, bi-weekly report, very short, that is called uh, something that they shown that they glow in, that they've done very well, something they still need to work on, and then we are going to tell you the level of engagement. If he's been to all the classes, if the work has been completed. So that's going to be bi-weekly, every other week. Okay, more questions. Adenir Cardoso. Oh, okay. We're going to make sure that Lucas has a buddy. Okay. What grade is we're Lucas in? We'll see with Ms. Renette. Okay. Okay. So we're going to make sure that he has a virtual buddy. And we'll, we'll get back to you. 
Any other questions or comments? What are your expectations of this new school year? Okay, Lila Shaikh from third, 10th grade also, okay. Super. For that, we're gonna talk to the um, secondary counselors. We are we only work for, with elementary, but we are also in communication with the secondary counselors as well. So they'll get back to you. Okay, yeah, it's hard time to start it virtually. Thank you for your support. Yes, it is. It, these are very um, strange times for all of us and it's very challenging to start virtually. We already did one trimester last year and this new academic school year, we are prepared to you know, face this challenge with every student and support you as much as possible. So know that we are always here for you and that you can count on us for every question, every comment that you have. Um, both your child's homeroom teacher and counselors are always available for anything you need. Okay, Yana, he hello, my son Philip in 1C class, we need help with the calendar schedule because we have schedule of another class and it's a little bit complicated. Thank you, okay. I think Miss Nidia can answer that question. Yeah, I want to add something about um, for for younger students, for younger learners, it's it, it's a good idea to have uh, visual aids of the you know the, the the calendar, the schedules, everything printed out and paste it uh, in and uh, around the place they 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 use uh, for for their classes. So they can, you know, visualize all the information because, uh, you know, older students can manage the tools and access different uh, electronic tools. But for, for younger learners, we, we recommend to have all the material printed out so they can visualize it and they can, they can have access to it, immediate access to it. There's another yeah. question I can, about. I can, Ms. Diana, oh. I can talk to the to the first grade teacher, Miss Mari Michu, and make sure that you get the right calendar. Yes, I was just going to say that too. Um, we will get the right calendar sent to you. There's a question about virtual recess. Virtual recess is on Wednesday and Thursday of every week. Wednesdays uh, is for students in kindergarten through second grade. Thursdays is for students uh, in grades three through fifth. Um, and it is from 9.30 to 10 in the morning. Uh, it is a time that the, e the elementary school administration, Ms. LaCour, Ms. Foxman, Foxman and myself, uh, have some time to interact with the students, playing games, uh, doing fun activities, so that it seems like a recess for them. Um, and it's another way for us to get to know them also. We, we understand that, um, and as we said before, uh, making friends can be one of the toughest things to do uh, in, in a new, in a new setting, in a new school, uh, when we when when we are in 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 presential school, we we help students uh, go in with them to recess, helping them make connections, establish uh, conversations. You know, in this virtual scenario, this virtual setting, they need all our help more than than ever. So, you as parents can can make it happen using the recommendations Ms. Roxana mentioned before, setting up the play dates and, 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 and facilitating those things for them, and also in 
asking them or encouraging them to join this space, especially designed for them to interact beyond, you know, the, the, the formality of the academic virtual setting. This, these recess are great opportunities to play, to interact, to know, to know their peers uh, in, a, in a different way, to know all other things from them. So uh, attending to this virtual recess in this particular moment in which we're just starting the school year, I, I find it very helpful for new students. So encourage your, your children to attend uh, these spaces. There's another question here. Okay. Um, is this is this for 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 high school? For middle school? Mr. Abdallah, eh, Hassan Abdallah, is this for middle school or elementary? Um, students have what we call synchronous and asynchronous classes. Synchronous classes are live classes with the teacher. Asynchronous classes, the teacher posts an assignment, students work during that time, and the teacher is there to answer any questions. Um, in elementary, we don't have uh, periods where the teach where the students are left alone. We do have uh, times where they're supposed to be working and completing an assignment. Uh, so if you're if you see your son or your daughter doing nothing, then that's not uh, there's something wrong there, and I would advise you to communicate with the teacher because that means that there is a misunderstanding or the schedule is not being followed or the teacher could have had internet troubles but usually when that happens they find a way to communicate with the administration so that we can let you know because that is for middle school can we refer Ms. abdallah to 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 the Mr. Dylan Carter, he is the middle school principal. I will write his email on the chat. Well, I think we are over the time now. Uh, if there are any other questions, comments, concerns, we're more than happy to help you with that. Mm -hmm. it's, very, it's very important to communicate your concerns uh, using the right channels and directing them to the, you know, to the right people. If you are not clear about who these people are, of course, we 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 more we uh, more than happy to help you uh, with that information. Also, in the in the in the Met webpage, where the staff section, you can go through all the the teachers' names and their roles and and the, and the principals and. So you and, and there are the email addresses, so you can go directly and address your concerns with the right person. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, and we will keep you posted on the next webinar for the following Thursday. Thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Really nice to meet you.